good morning. Absolutely great to see you. Looks like we've got a few traveling for spring break. A few things that pertain to the outreach ministry that are coming up. One is Outside the Walls. It comes up on April the 3rd. I encourage you to get with your agape group and, and find somebody who needs help in the community who's not a member of a church family and to help them in whatever they need. It's a very good outreach event. There's a cool story from the last time we did Outside the Walls, but I can't share it yet. Maybe by next time I can. It hasn't come all the way through. Uh, one of those things that, that's still going on from, from uh, back in October when we did Outside the Walls. I think this is about the sixth time we've done it. So uh, lots of good stuff happening with Outside the Walls. And then at the end of April, that last weekend in April, we're going to have a Friends Day brunch. We encourage everybody to uh, invite a friend to church that day, uh, to services that day. We'll have regular uh, 8.30 service and regular 1045 service, but instead of having class in the middle, we're going to have brunch in the family center so that we can meet and, and greet all of our visitors that day. So we're looking forward to that. You may have noticed that we are in the middle of a presidential election cycle, and you may have noticed that there are uh, a lot of opinions out there about who should be the next president and about all of the issues that surround the presidency, you may have noticed that we disagree. Person to person, you each have your own opinion about this or that or the other. And sometimes people get offended whenever we discuss these kinds of things. Everybody's got their opinion about gun control, especially lately with the many mass shootings. Should we have gun control or not? Do guns make us safer or do they make us more at risk? You've certainly seen the, the controversy surrounding the, a particular color of a cup at a popular coffee chain. People have been offended by this. Should we let Syrian refugees in or should we not? We're dealing with safety and compassion and, and the issues there. Is Islam a religion of peace or a militant religion? What should we do with the Confederate flag? Should it fly or not? What should we do with the rights of the homosexual community? What should we do with race relations? Surely you've seen this hashtag Black Lives Matter. Have you seen the peeled oranges that are wrapped in cellophane at a popular chain store, they have peeled oranges and then, for convenience sake, and then put them in a plastic baggie because nature didn't give them an, uh, a wrapper. What should we do with this? People are offended by this. And basically anything that a presidential candidate ever says can be offensive to one side or the other. Have you ever had a family member ask you for a loan? That's a good place to get offended. Have you ever had a family member ask you to co-sign a loan for them? And there are various ways in your own family to be offended, various ways that, that and, and things that we say that make Thanksgiving a very uncomfortable meal, right? Well, Proverbs is a perfect place to go when everybody around us is a victim of something and is offended by something. Proverbs is a, a, a great place to go because it's part of the wisdom literature. It's, it's much like some of the stuff grandpa would say while you're on the back porch selling peas. Things about life and godliness and how to conduct yourself in public and with one another. And I think in today's time we could really use a dose of what grandpa had to say. We could really use a voice of reason especially when the public is so hypersensitive and overly offended. It's time for us to find out how to deal with these kinds of issues. And I want to be clear, I'm not taking sides on any of the issues. We're not discussing them. I don't think it's an appropriate place or time to do that, and that would certainly overshadow our purpose 
this morning, but I personally struggle with knowing what to say and when to say it and knowing what is appropriate and when is it appropriate to say, when is it appropriate to give my own opinion and how is it appropriate to give my opinion? Because I think some places it's just totally inappropriate to give your opinion on things that matter. Social media would be one of those places. It itself is, is it's nothing. It, it, it has no moral stance. Social media does not have a moral stance. It's not good. It's not bad. It's what you make of it. But I have found that one of the meanest places in the world to be is the comment section on YouTube. People are absolutely brutal there, and yet you never find somebody that says, okay, I see it your way now in those places. So when is it appropriate to talk about these things, and how should we talk about these things, and what is the Christian response to these things? How can we speak with truth and love in issues of politics to family? How can we make Thanksgiving less awkward when somebody has offended us? in our own family. And one look at the news or our own news feed or one stroll through any public gathering will tell you that I'm not the only one that struggles with what to say and when to say it. It is a constant battle for all of us to know when to express our opinion, what things we should express our opinions about, and how we should do it. We struggle with this. We struggle with speaking truth and love simultaneously. Often we'll speak truth or love, but rarely have we found that, that balance to speak truth and love at the same time. If you would turn with me to Proverbs 17, we'll start in verse 9. This is the perfect place to go when everyone around us is a victim of of something. It speaks to our role in interpersonal conflict. It speaks to how we can how we can engage, how we can deal with the emotionally charged hot topics of our day with truth and with grace. And we can still communicate God's love with people on both sides of every issue. Because at the end of the day, God does love the people on both sides of the issue. God loves Democrats as much as he loves Republicans. We need to speak truth and love to both. Starting in verse 9, it says, Whoever covers an offense seeks love, but he who repeats a matter separates close friends. A rebuke goes deeper into a man of understanding than a hundred blows into a fool. I like the way the Holman Christian Standard Bible puts verse 9. It says, whoever conceals an offense promotes love, but whoever gossips about it separates friends. It says whoever conceals, conceals or forgives or covers. It doesn't say whoever ignores an issue because the Christian cannot afford to ignore an issue because to ignore the issues around us, to ignore the things that people are feeling and thinking of the day is to be ignorant of how to reach them. If we don't know what they're thinking, we don't know what's important to them, if we just ignore the issues of the day, we're ignorant of how to reach them because we have to meet them according to what they're feeling, what they're thinking, the things that are important to them. And so the Christian can't afford to ignore the issues of the day because we don't want to be an ignorant people. We want to be culturally savvy people so that we can reach them with the gospel, of course. And so it doesn't say whoever ignores an offense. It says whoever conceals or whoever covers, whoever forgives. As Frank put it this morning, whoever carries that burden for them, that's out of love. And whoever gossips about it separates friends, or whoever repeats a matter separates friends. Surely you have offended somebody at some point in your own family. 
and you thought you worked through it, but you really didn't. You just ignored the issue. And that thing keeps coming up again and again and again. Trey Morgan said, don't be historical in your marriage, right? This is that kind of idea. Whoever repeats a matter separates close friends to keep bringing the past up again over and over and over again is harmful to the relationship, right? But the one who actually forgives, who bears that burden, that's love, and that gives value to the relationship to carry that burden for somebody else. If wise, the offended is told to seek love. If the offended is wise, they will seek love, and love gives forgiveness. And the offended doesn't bring it up again. The offended doesn't throw it in their face again for the sake of the friendship, and that gives value to the relationship. Because you see, offense is a choice. We can choose to be offended or to not. We can't necessarily choose to disagree. We may disagree, and that's just a fact of life. I have my opinion, you have your opinion. And we may disagree, but whether or not I get offended over it is a choice of mine. I can choose whether or not to be offended. And surely there are victims of all these kinds of issues that we have already mentioned this morning. Surely there are victims of these things. But the fact that people get offended over it is their own choice. And the wise Christian chooses to not be offended. The wise Christian chooses to disagree and either disregard it or disagree and work through it. The wise Christian chooses to cover it, to conceal it, to forgive it, to bear that burden. The fool chooses to be offended by it. The fool chooses to play the victim. Because being offended, playing the victim, is really a selfish stance. It's really reflective upon somebody's own character. And verse 10 tells us to realize who it is we're talking to. It says a rebuke goes deeper into a man of understanding than a hundred blows into a fool. You can beat a fool with your opinion and he will never change. But you can tell somebody who is wise one time. You can express your opinion one time. And he will either change or say, I'm sorry, we disagree. We can discuss this, but we may disagree about it. There's a difference between being the wise person and the foolish person in Proverbs. The wise one considers what the other one is saying, really considers it, has a conversation, a discussion about it, but the fool doesn't listen. You can beat the fool, and it won't change anything. Verse 10 says that it is foolish to say something to somebody who isn't emotionally or spiritually mature enough to hear it. It reflects on us whenever we say something that is offensive. It says something about our own character when we say something that is offensive to somebody else. It says that even though they're not mature enough to hear it, neither are we because we said it. We're just as foolish as They are, we're the fool for saying something that might be offensive. They might be immature for getting offended about it, but we're the fool for not being able to see that they weren't mature enough to hear it. When somebody is offended by our words, it says as much about us as it says about them. When somebody is offended by something we did, it says as much about us because we weren't considerate. We did not consider their feelings, we did not consider their maturity, or we weren't wise enough to be able to discern whether or not they could hear this. Whenever you say to your kids, I've told you a thousand times, it's because they're being a fool, right? They haven't listened. Moving on to verses 11 through 13. An evil man seeks only rebellion, and a cruel messenger will be sent against him. Let a man meet a she-bear robbed of her cubs rather than a fool in his folly. If anyone returns evil for good, evil will not depart from his house. 
here's what happens when we choose to engage the fool. Engaging the fool is called evil. Why? Because what, what is this about? Engaging the fool is about control. Engaging the fool is about your own insecurities. Why would you say something to somebody that may offend them? Only because you're trying to control them or because you're insecure about your own self. Only because you're trying this sort of one-upmanship. That's the only reason you would engage the fool. And trying to control somebody or saying something offensive to somebody because you are insecure with your own self is considered evil, according to Proverbs. And when we let evil into our house, when we deliberately, purposefully try to offend those around us, try to hurt those around us, certainly that is called evil, certainly that is called sin. And when you let evil in, he sets up camp and he's there to stay. Verse 12 says, says that you would be better off meeting a mama bear who has been robbed of her cubs than to engage the fool, than to purposefully say something to somebody that would offend them. Than to purposefully say somebody something to somebody who can't take it. You have a better chance of winning the battle against a mama bear who just lost her cubs than you do winning a battle against somebody who's a fool, who can't take it, who's not spiritually and emotionally mature enough to take what you have to say. You have a better chance with a bear than with a fool. You have a better chance with a bear than with somebody choosing to play the victim. Verses 14 and 15 say, the beginning of strife is like letting out water, so quit before the quarrel breaks out. He who justifies the wicked and he who condemns the righteous are both like an abomination to the Lord. Here provides the answer to most of the, the controversial hot topics of the day. Quit before a quarrel breaks out. How wise is this? It's like water being let loose from a dam. You can't put it back. Consider what you say. Consider who you're saying it to. Consider how they may take it because once you say it, you can't let it back in. You can't undo that. Have you ever been talking to somebody and in the midst of, of speaking to them, as you're saying it, you think, stop, 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 don't say that. I did this just last week, last Wednesday. I was talking to somebody and I thought, Hush, and you're still talking. You can't let these things back in. You can't undo them. You can't go back. And so Proverbs tells us, quit before it gets out of hand. You're in the midst of a conversation and you realize I shouldn't be here. Just stop. There's a whole lot of wisdom. It's so simple and yet we have such a problem with it. We have such difficulty with it. Just stop before it gets out of hand, before somebody gets hurt, before feelings get hurt and you mar the relationship and you hurt the friendship and you can't go back on it. It can't be undone. When we take sides, we often twist our own, we often twist facts to prove our own opinion. Certainly we've seen this. I think social media has, has taken this to a new extreme. There are now whole websites, whole media outlets devoted to certain political stances, certain social justice issues, and they're so notorious for, for twisting the facts and, and putting articles out there and putting videos out there and things like that, and people share them and they, they, they send them on down the line so that they can prove I'm right and you're wrong whenever the facts aren't even, even true. They're calling the righteous wicked and the wicked righteous. In order to prove my own opinion, I have made stuff up just to prove I'm right. We have to be discerning. We have to consider what we are saying. We have to consider what we're saying because we're saying it to a person that God loves. And we have to consider whether or not it's actually 
true. The Christian's supposed to be a, a wise person, a discerning person, somebody who can, can look at the issues of life and see what's important, see what to say in that situation, be a voice of, re, a voice of reason in those kinds of situations, not one that just spews off whatever they want to because I'm right and you're wrong and I'm going to prove it and I don't care what I have to do to prove it. That is certainly calling the wicked righteous and the righteous wicked. Verse 16, it says, Why should a fool have money in his hand to buy wisdom when he has no sense? A friend loves at all times, but a brother is born for adversity. The fool is so foolish, if, if wisdom were for sale, and he had the money in his hand to buy it, and wisdom were right there in front of him, he wouldn't. He's got no sense. He wouldn't buy it if he could. So why do we bother speaking reason into a, or trying to speak reason into such a situation? He wouldn't buy wisdom if he could. A friend loves you when you disagree. You may disagree very, very deeply, but a friend will love you. But if you choose to offend a friend, he may not love you anymore. And family loves you. You can spit in your mom's face, right? I wouldn't suggest it. She may hurt you. But she will love you. A brother is born for an adverse time. A brother will love you no matter, right? And so we have to value these relationships. A friend loves even when you disagree. And family loves in the face of the most offensive comments. So why aren't we considerate of what we say to our friends and our family? Verse 18. One who lacks sense gives a pledge, and one who puts up security in the presence of his neighbor. Whoever loves transgression loves strife, and he who makes his door high seeks destruction. One very good way to get offended is to give a family member a loan. And not be not not come to the table knowing everything that is involved with that, not considering that a gift or, or co-signing a loan for for a family member. That makes Thanksgiving a very awkward dinner whenever somebody owes something else something and you you don't consider it a gift, you don't consider it a love offering. And Proverbs says that one who lacks sense gives a pledge and puts up security in the presence of his neighbor. And I think that's what he's talking about here giving a loan to a, a family member. Certainly, we're not always uh, messed over when we do these kinds of things. Sometimes these go well because you've, you've both discussed the terms of this agreement and you've both entered it uh, wisely, and that's fine. Proverbs is not saying you should never do stuff like this. Proverbs is a book of general wisdom. These things are generally true. You would generally be wise not to do something like this, but... We must be discerning, and we must be realistic, and we must be uh, wise about when we do these kinds of things, because Proverbs says it's generally unwise to do this. This is a really good way to get offended. It also says that the arrogant don't care that they will offend somebody. That's setting the door high, or uh, setting the threshold high, as some translations put it. Somebody with a, a taller door in the uh, ancient Near East was thought to be arrogant, and they don't care who they offend. They don't care if relationships are destroyed. They're not considerate of others. They don't consider what they say or who they say it to. So what is the Christian's response to the controversial hot topics of the day? What is the Christian's response to disagreement within one's own family? How do we guard ourselves against being offended? How do we guard ourselves against offending those around us? I think there are, in general, three things that we can do, three potential responses that we have that, that Proverbs gives us. The first one is to dodge these issues. And, and to begin with, you're thinking, oh, this is just a cop-out. And I, I, don't think it, I don't think it is. I think Proverbs gives us good examples about 
uh, dodging such issues. I think this is a biblically wise thing to do at times, depending on uh, the, the situation we find ourselves in. And so just hear me out. The first to dodge the issue. When you find yourself in a situation in which you are more emotionally invested in than you are uh, intellectually invested in, whenever something has more emotional importance than it has actual importance, I think the correct answer here is to walk away. And this is what we mean by dodging an issue. When you find yourself in a situation and you, you discover, whoa, I'm not mature enough to deal with this. I have more emotions tied to this than I do sense. I need to walk away from this. This is to dodge the issue. This is the proper response whenever our emotions are tied to an issue and the, the issue has more emotional uh, importance to it than it has actual importance to it. To just walk away. I can't deal with this. I'm not mature enough to deal with this. I need to remove myself from the conversation. Proverbs 26, 17 says, whoever meddles in a quarrel, not his own, is like one who takes a passing dog by the ears. What's going to happen whenever you grab a dog by the ears? He's not going to be very happy with you. Now, I know there are some runners in here. I, I've, I've heard that. I, I don't necessarily understand that, but I know that some of you run. Uh, whenever you're not being chased, and, and that's good. Uh, th that's healthy for you. And whenever you're running, uh, you're running down your, your neighborhood, and uh, the neighborhood dogs start following you, and you've never seen some of these dogs that are, that are following you. You turn around, you see there's a dog behind you. You, you don't know what to do, so you, you turn around, and you walk up to the dog, and you grab the dog by the ears. You don't know this dog. You're safe right now, right? But what happens when you let go of this dog that you have never met? You have presented yourself as an aggressive figure. And so when you let go of the dog, the dog's not going to be necessarily nice to you. This is what Proverbs is, is saying. You're safe for the moment, but because of your knee-jerk reaction to just grab the dog, you're now in danger. Let the dog pass by is the lesson of Proverbs. At times, it is fine to let the dog pass by. You don't know the dog. He's not your dog. Let him go. Whenever you discover I'm not emotionally mature enough to deal with this situation, to engage this discussion, you say, that is not my dog. Let him go. The next is to disregard. And I think so many of the issues we see uh, handed down to us that, that we're expected to hand on to the next person that, that people want us to get fired up about, they, they fall in this category. I think the vast majority of them do. Most of them don't matter. Most of them have no actual importance at all. Most offensive language falls in this category. Just avoid these discussions, disregard these discussions. Now, that's different than ignoring a, a discussion, but it is okay to avoid it. Some discussions simply don't matter. I've learned that there are at least two sides to every story, and most of the time, both sides are wrong because they're trying to perpetrate their particular view. They're trying to get you over on, on their particular side, and so often both sides of every story are wrong, especially those handed down to us through uh, the media and social media and things like this, that they're just trying to get us riled up about something that, that just doesn't matter. The truth is the only news stories that become a big deal are the news stories that we pass on to our, our neighbor. The news stories that become a, a big deal are those that we repeat, that we get fired up about, and so we try to fire somebody up, else up about them. And the only gossip that ever does any damage is the gossip that is shared. Proverbs 20 verse 3 says, It is to one's honor to avoid strife, but every fool is quick to quarrel. Don't be quick to quarrel. Most discussions need to just be avoided. Don't be quick to quarrel. The next is to discern. 
And this is where the important issues go, the things that the hills you are willing to die on, to discern. And certainly there's some discernment that needs to happen in the first two. You discern whether or not you need to walk away or you need to avoid a discussion or you need to discern and work through a discussion and handle it and and make peace with it and forgive. Some issues and disagreements are just so important that we've got to deal with them. But when we deal with them, we must seek truth and love simultaneously. We must seek truth and love, not truth or love. We have to be so committed to truth and love in our discussions, in our handling of other people and their opinions. We have to be so committed to truth and love that people just don't know what to do with us. Because that's not a a position that is taken very often. Somebody once said that truth without love equals harshness, and love without truth is compromise. If you would, turn over really quickly. I'm running out of time. Uh, to Ephesians 4.15. Ephesians 4.15 says, Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ. To speak truth in love is to mature in your faith, to grow up in every way. It's to mature. Speaking truth in love speaks of the maturity of, of a Christian. No doubt it is a strange time to be alive. You consider the political issues of the day. You consider the people running. It is a strange time to be alive. We live in a time of of microaggressions and safe spaces. We live in the United States of political correctness. We do have a certain freedom of speech in America, but as we are told in scripture, all things are permittable, not all things are beneficial. Sometimes we have to discern what we say, when we say it, how we say it, and who we say it to, and that is the mark of a wise Christian. Proverbs 10.19 says, when words are many, transgression is not lacking, but whoever restrains his lips is prudent. One thing you can count on, when words are many, transgression is not lacking. Maybe as a church, we need to just be a little more discerning about what we say so that we can give more weight to the things that matter and not get caught up in things that don't matter. To be more wise about our speech, to be wise about the issues that we do decide to speak to instead of being emotionally charged in every single thing that comes up. Abraham Lincoln said, it's better to remain silent and thought a fool than to speak and remove all doubt. I think that's where we stand oftentimes. It's better to be silent and and thought a fool than to speak and to prove that you are. That's where I stand most of the time. Just hush. This morning, if you have a need for this church family, one of our elders will be up front, one will be in the back. We'll be here to support you in any physical need or spiritual need you have. Please come forward as we stand and sing.